Shalom, I want to give all praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rukh Kodash, double honors to my teachers, the apostles of Great Millstone, peace and mercy to the elect who are in the house of David, and Shalom to the 130 Asherala, who today are known as the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Indians, but before losing their heritage, as prophesied in uh, Jeremiah 17 and 4, tells you, um, here, let me get it, actually, it's, um, let's see right here, this is Jeremiah 17 and 4, and thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine, her in thine inheritance that I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not, for ye have kindled a fire in mine anger, which shall burn forever, and that's what happened, that's, I was, uh, Negroes, Latinos, and Native Indians. When you get into the Bible, it's basically a, a big timeline, and it follows the 18 nations which are upon the earth right now. The primary nation being the nation of Israel, which come from the 12 children described in the Bible under Genesis 49 and 1. You had a man named Jacob, who ultimately was the son of Abraham, Isaac, and then it was himself, Jacob, who God changed his name to Israel, meaning which is Yasharala in the Hebrew, which means he prints power. So he's the prince of the power. We're the princes of God, right? The 12 tribes. So that includes the uh, Jacob's direct sons and his grandsons, Ephraim and Manasseh, who received, who inherited their father's blessing, but who are forefather of Israel, adopted as his own sons. The, and uh, Ephraim today would be known as your Puerto Rican, Manasseh would be your, your, your modern day Cubans, right? Those who believe in this truth, right? Those are going to be the uh, Israelites, regardless of how they look. Now, ultimately, you're the lost Israelites, people. So in this lesson, we're going to go ahead and get into uh, casting lots, right? Because that's part of our heritage, right? A lot of our people, we leave it up to the spirit, right? It tells you here, uh, a lot of, you know, it was recently brought up by Apostle Tahar that the uh, the act of casting lots, which people say uh, is letting God decide on it, uh, there was a, where he recorded the uh, false prophet Nathan from the IUIC, which is a, a trap for Israelites, um, but he had him uh, blur out that casting lots was wicked, but when, uh, but the Bible themselves talk about uh, about you ca uh, using lots to let God decide, right? Uh, even in modern uh, history or, or, or Paul, you know, it tells you here. Let me get it. it says, uh, "Cleromancy is a form of sor sortation, casting of lots, in which the outcome is determined by means that." normally would be considered random such as the rolling of a dice but are sometimes believed to reveal the will of god or something super or other supernatural entities because that's true because you can do casting lots of uh on the uh left hand side right look at samuel and the witch of endor right but you also just cast lots on on the uh on the right side right the righteous casting of lots and the lord used these these uh these stones for the priest originally back when the uh the the uh, Aaron tribe came the levitical priesthood which the uh sons of Aaron uh managed right they helmed it they used the they would cast lots right and this was for uh um this was for uh uh to let like, god decide right it tells you here it says exodus 28 and 30 and you shall put the breastplate of judgment and the umum and the thumum, and they shall be over Aaron's heart when he goes in before Yahweh, Bashem Yahushai, and Aaron shall carry the judgment of the sons of Israel over his heart before the Lord continually. Yeah, talking about the ephod, right? the, the, the priest used the word, but the point being is that they used to cast lots, right? They used to pray on the Lord and stuff, and, and, and the modern umum and thumum, you know, after we lost our heritage, as described in Jeremiah 17 and 4, that we're going to lose our heritage, we lost our ways. 
But now we're coming back to our ways, and what's those ways? That's the Bible. That's the the word the word of the Lord. All right, namely the by uh, and you get it namely by reading this King James 1611 version, which includes the Apocrypha. The what is it? 14 missing books out of the Bible that they took out. All right. Besides, and the thing is, is besides just you know the mobile phone, it's there all the technology out recently, right? It's the internet that connects us. The unicorn, as Apostle Tahar and the Apostles and, and men of G, uh, GMS, who again have the 100% truth. Because again, when you look into every every other, uh, what you would call camp or any other uh, faction or whatever, ultimately just other, you know, rebellious groups. Because there's only one group that that, that the Lord set up, and that's obviously uh, Apostle Tahar, Apostle Kabar, Apostle Ramlam, Apostle Rakar, and the other apostles on down. You know, without faltering, right? That's how you know who who the Lord set up. Because again, and and and, and now we have this truth at our at our fingertips, right? And you might say, well, you know, technology. No, that's not the same thing as what it's about. What are you talking about, man? When you break down technology, all it ultimately is is chemicals, right? Elements, right? The Lord's the master of this of elements, man. He can make whatever he wants, right? Before. He, they would do it spiritually, right? When, when we were spiritually stronger in the desert of Egypt, right? Of wandering uh, the Sinai Peninsula, whatever. Peninsula, excuse me, Right? We would but leave on the uh, Lord and then we would use the Umm and the Thummim, right? And the Lord's done it again, but He's done it, uh, you know, through technical ways and again and through His, his, uh, his, his, blacksmith or what you would call his uh, scientist right it tells you in Isaiah 54 and 16 behold I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work and I have created the wasters to destroy right? that there namely gets into making the, the, the arrows the missiles but ultimately this these are the people that the Lord has set up these alchemists these blacksmiths the ones who melt these these different uh, chemicals, these elements, so that way, so that way they could get their technology moving. They could get their the forces of understanding. They, they could, it tells you in the Bible it tells you like how are the things of Esau sought out, right? Esau is a. As it tells you the scripture again, it tells you. I'm paraphrasing. Says that uh, the wicked are smarter than uh, King David, right? Because Esau, because the Lord has made Esau, a, 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 you know. He's given him the blessing of this world, and how does he do that? He doesn't just, you know, uh, you know, snap of, you know, in a in a poof of a cloud, like it, all of a sudden it happened. No, this is developed by t by the understanding, the wisdom, because it tells you that God gives you uh, knowledge, right? He says, "You open your eyes, and you shall uh, receive the the, the, the uh, bread." Right? I'm talking about the bread of wisdom. Well, all this technology ultimately is going to lead to the chip. Right? But a lot of you people are going to be bamboozled by this shit, right? You look around, you can see a lot of people doing this now, right? They're getting uh, name brand beats, paying like two, three hundred bucks for shit like this. You know, like spending tons of money, stuff you don't have to spend. You could easily go on Amazon for under 50 bucks. You could buy yourself a good wireless, you know, in the head, non-conspicuous uh, headsets, which rival any of these beats ones. You know, but uh, there's going to be a lot of people, though, like, like, like again, like it's been told by Apostle Tahar and... And, uh, and all the other men on down from from Great Millstone, but the RFID chip is the mark of the beast. There's gonna be a lot of people who aren't gonna gonna, gonna take heed, namely of our people, the Israelites, the Negro, Latinos, and Native Indians. Meaning that one out of every Negro, Latino, and Native Indian you know is only gonna survive. The other two are gonna have to kick the bucket. Are gonna have to pay because of their unbelief, right? They're not not even believing this, you know, not getting right in time. And only one third is gonna 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 wake up or be friends of those who have woken up and are nice to, to those who have who are doing the work, right? This is Revelations 13 and 16. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their hand, in their right hand, or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name that's that shit people you know it's, 
the year of the Karagma. Right? This is this is the time we're at the end of our aeon. The Lord is about to come back. These devils who are left in power, who are um, basically running the show, instead of giving it over graciously, you know, that's not Esau's spirit, right? Esau's spirit is, you know, if I can't have it, no one can, right? That's why he's, that's why the the heights of his power led to slavery and all that, you know, all that craziness, right? Everything he does exalts the, the opposite of the Lord, right? To where you look what we have now, full on blown Satanism, right? Veiled and hidden by a facade of, of liberal uh, politicism, right? This is what's going to happen if you uh, take the mark. It says, Revelations 14 and 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up and forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship worship the beast or his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. <coughs> so, that's what's going to happen to you people, right? But ultimately, again, if, you know, if, if you take it, it's because you were meant to take it, right? Because, you know, ultimately... If, if you're about this word, you know, like it's like when I first got into this truth, I can testify. I, I wanted to wake up everybody and in the, in their and their grannies, right? I wanted to give this truth to everybody, even people, other other the other nations, right? The heathens, right? I wanted to tell wicked ass people about this truth, thinking that I could save them, whatever. You no, know, the way it works is that if you're gonna, the way that that the parable of the wheat and tares, where the Lord is gonna separate. The nations and the good and the bad is that he's gonna he's gonna put it on your spirit to want to gravitate towards a certain thing. You're either gonna start hanging out with more wicked people, or you're gonna start hanging out with more righteous people. You know, but either way, you're gonna start seeing yourself a divide. This is this is gonna happen, people. This is actually happening now. I'm sure a lot of you people have known it. But uh, again, hopefully this video was edifying, Akim. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rakhak Dash. To watch my teachers, the apostle of the great millstone, peace and mercy to the elect, with the house of David, Shalom.